Hey everybody, it's Dan from The Plague. Uh, I just wanted to make one more video this year and uh, wish everybody happy holidays and I'm enjoying some, you know, witching metal here for the season. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to make a top 20 list uh, for the best albums of the year. Yeah, it's been an interesting year, 2021. It seems like uh, there's been a lot of good releases, but there haven't been a whole lot of really exceptional ones uh, in my book. Um, Again, my tastes tend toward to gravitate towards the classic metal, um, thrash metal, uh, some black metal, that kind of stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, without too much further ado, uh, let me get into it. And yeah, here are my top 20. So let me start with uh, this one, which I did a review of elsewhere on, on this channel, so if you want to take a look at that. Um, it is Possessed by Evil by the band Japanese band Evil. Uh, who have been around for a little while now. And um, I talk about this quite a bit more in the review, so I won't go into too, detail, too much detail, but um, it's just a really good slab of, you know, blackened speed metal, uh, pretty, pretty rough around the edges, but, um, you know, very intense, uh, you know, very to the point. And there are actually some pretty good solos on here too. That was another thing that um, kind of breaks the mold for, for this genre. But um, yeah, excellent album here. So for number 19, um, I chose the latest from the long-running band Moonspell, uh, Hermitage. So um, not only does this have a great cover, <laughs> just some generally cool artwork all around. You can check out that back cover. And the inner uh, gatefold is pretty killer. So, um, but yeah, I mean, their last album, 1755, was a few years ago now, and um, that one was a lot more grandiose and uh, just heavier, I think, in general. Like, there was a lot more of uh, the harsher vocals. Um, and this one's a little bit more restrained, uh, a little bit more atmospheric, uh, a lot more clean vocals. And they kind of tap more into their more gothic uh, metal roots, um, which is really cool. Because I, I like both both sides of this band. And, um, yeah, it's it's one of those ones that doesn't have a lot of, like, songs that just, you know, grab you right away, but um, just a very strong album all the way through. So yeah, it's, it's a good listen. So for number 18 uh, is another album that I actually reviewed on this channel, which is Undo the Chains by the band Wraith. Um, unfortunately, I do not have a physical copy of this yet, but um, I will throw a uh, image up on the screen for you. And this is another, that kind of falls generally into that um, black and speed metal, a uh, little bit little bit of thrash metal thrown in there as well. Um, very, very cool riffs, um, very heavy. Uh, if I had to have one complaint with this album, it would probably be the vocals are a little bit one dimensional, but they still fit the music. And the whole thing as a package just works really well for me. So for number 17, um, I have a band called Cross Vault and their latest album, As Strangers We Depart. Um, now this is definitely what you classify as epic doom metal. Um, it's very it's very grand, it's uh, you know, long songs, uh, very dense. It's not an album that you can just put on and casually listen to. Um, but it's very, very well, well recorded, very well written. Um, just an all around uh, really solid album. Um, that, you know, if you're in the right mood for it, it's really just perfect spot on. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of um, the band Solstice, uh, the UK band Solstice and um, Sorcerer. It's it's kind of got that level of just really quality melodic, but super heavy um, doom metal, which is, you know, perfect for this time of year as we're all enjoying the rainy gray weather. Uh, number 16 is another album that I do not have a um, physical copy of yet. I have it on order, um, and I think it's part of the whole vinyl slowdown that is, is being delayed so long, because it's been out, I think, since September or something. But it is the latest from Ministry, uh, Moral Hygiene. Uh, Ministry is a band that I loved back in the 80s. Um, they kind of started losing me with uh, Psalm 69, and then really just kind of kind of went off the rails there um, for a long time and uh, it's just been a lot of kind of derivative repetitive albums for you know the past 25 30 years um, I mean there's been some good songs here and there it hasn't been like a total loss but it's just it's disappointing because they were so good and so original um, 
back in their heyday. Um, with this album, it really does feel like, uh, if not a true return to you know the absolute best quality of those those early albums, um, definitely you know getting much much closer than they have in a long time. Um, there is a, a a much more diverse uh, you know range in terms of the um, tempos, uh, the, the just the whole, the whole feel of the songs is a lot more diverse than it has been for for um, a long time. Uh, the songs themselves are a lot more dynamic. It's not just, you know, kicking into one riff and then just plowing it into the ground for five minutes. Um, uh, Al's vocals are still very much, you know, his vocals. Um, but, you know, they work here. Uh, and he is seems to be doing a lot more clever use of sampling uh, this time around than he has for a while. Um, so I was really glad to hear that. Um, there's even a, there's even a cool version of uh, the Stooges' uh, Search and Destroy on here. So, yeah, I think all around it's it's probably my favorite album since Psalm 69 of, of Ministries. So pretty impressive. Um, I'm glad to have them back. I'm looking forward to seeing them on the road next year if uh, they don't have to postpone again. All right, number 15 is an odd one. I wasn't sure... If I was going to put on the list, um, but the last couple times I listened to it, it's just, it's so unusual and just so well executed uh, that I, I had to include it here. It's uh, by Catafalk, uh, their latest album, Vodak. I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. I'm not good with um, pronunciation, but um, yeah, this band is just all over the map. Like, they have elements of black metal, they have elements of folk, they have elements of prog rock. Um, and like, you know, like a 70s sort of prog rock. Uh, they have like male and female vocals, um, a lot of instrumental, long instrumental passages, but um, it never gets boring. Like it's never like, like just too esoteric or, you know, too intellectualized. It's, there's a lot of like pretty uh, visceral riffs on this album. Like when it's heavy, it's really heavy. Um, there's some blast beats, you know, it's just, it's a really interesting, you know, all-inclusive metal album that, um, yeah, people should just check it out. I mean, this band has been doing some really inventive stuff for a long time now, so um, I'm glad to see that they're still still doing it, and uh, this is right up there with the best of their work. Next up, at number 14, is a, another band from the U.S., and this is the band Sabre, uh, with the album Without Warning. Um, this is a band that's fairly new, uh, they have a really good, just kind of classic, uh, traditional heavy metal sound to them. Nothing super complex here, but, um, just really good, well-structured songs, um, good production. And, uh, the vocalist who's, um, just got a great range and can really, really nail those classic, like, piercing screams. So, yeah, a good, solid album that, um, I just find myself coming back to, uh, again and again. So, always a good sign. Number 13 is a band that I've actually been following for a little while now. Um, they are from Germany. Uh, they are called Vulture, and this is their latest uh, Deal in Death. Um, very much classic speed metal uh, combined with like really early thrash metal. Um, there is a definite uh, Exodus feeling here, mainly because the vocalist is just like like spot on Paul Bailoff at times. Uh, just got that really raw, like just out of control uh but like perfect for the music uh, vocal style. Um, and yeah, the band just have some great riffs, uh, some great solos uh, throughout. And um, they, they, they use the gang vocals really well. So there's a lot of um, catchy choruses. Um, Malicious Souls is, is one that could seem being great in concert. Uh, the Court of Caligula, another one. Um, yeah, just all through. It's, it's a really solid album. Um, band that's, just keeps going from strength to strength as far as I can tell. Like um, as much as I like their early stuff too, this is just, you know, one one step above. At number twelve is a band from the Northwest. Um, they are called Unto Others. Uh, they are from Portland, Oregon. You may be familiar with them because they had to change their name from Idle Hands uh, when they released uh, I believe one album and an E P under that name. Um, they toured they played here with uh, King Diamond uh, a few years ago. Um, put on a really good show. Um, and the core of the band actually was the band Spellcaster. Um, if anyone remembers them, a little bit more of a classic uh, 
speed metal, classic heavy metal band from a few years ago that were also really good. Um, and two others, though, are something like completely unique and just they've really moved into a new direction that's, uh, I think, really interesting. And I'm really curious to see where they go. Um, they're very, it's definitely got heavy metal elements, but there's also a great deal of um, like 80s goth rock and uh, like post punk. So you get a lot of like clean guitars, uh, clean, really deep vocals, um, but then it's mixed in with like some some harsher vocals and some just really great heavy riffs. Um, but yeah, they just they are really good at just creating these like really atmospheric, kind of depressing, but like just super memorable songs. So it's it's a really solid album, and um, if you haven't had a chance to to check them out yet, I totally advise that you do. All right, number 11 is a band that is normally in the top three if they have an album out during any particular year. Um, and this one has been growing on me, so it, it might come up in the rankings at some point, but um, it's the latest from Accept, Too Mean to Die. Uh, you know, ever since they got, they got back together and got um, Mark Tornillo in the band, they have really been just, you know going from strength to strength, you know, each album has been solid. Uh, there's been a couple like Stalingrad that I think are uh, particularly standout albums. Um, but they have not been disappointing. And, uh, this was the first one where I felt like maybe they were just a little bit too comfortable, you know, just kind of doing the same except formula. Um, but you know, they're so good at it. And, you know, a lot of these songs, uh, the, the title track, uh, Overnight Sensation, The Undertaker. The Undertaker is, is kind of a, a little bit slower, more moody track um, than they normally do, but um, great song. Uh, the Best is Yet to Come, How Do We Sleep. It's it's a really good, solid album. I mean, except, you know, Wolf Hoppin is just, he seems to have like this endless well of just, you know, classic except riffs. And uh, the production, you know, Andy Sneap, Great, produ great production again, even though they had to do it under rather uh, trying times with the pandemic. Um, so, yeah, again, not I, I don't think is maybe as good as some of their other albums from recent years. But uh, like I said, maybe that'll change. Uh, my mind will change on that at some point. Uh, except for one of those bands that I don't think I appreciated enough back in the 80s. I mean, I always liked them and, you know, bought their albums when they came out. But um yeah, as time has gone on, they've they've really just, you know, elevated to one of my absolute all-time favorite heavy metal bands. And the fact that they've been able to come back, you know, in this century and produce so many strong records has just been kind of mind-blowing. And just, uh, you know, I'm just super happy that they've, they've done that. So I, I cannot complain about this at all. So <laughs> number 11, except... Number 10 is one of the more unusual bands on here. Um, it's a band called Electric Crown, and I, again, unfortunately don't have a physical copy yet, but um, I plan to fix that as soon as I can. Um, they're from Russia, and they really mix a lot of different, you know, they're all pretty traditional heavy metal styles, but um, yeah, it's got some of that, like, uh, you know, classic New Wave of British heavy metal riffing uh, a little bit on the darker side so maybe more like you know Witchfinder general that kind of thing um and they mix it with like some of the like really evil riffs from merciful fate um but then they have a song like um what is it it's uh under one flag which is like it's a dead ringer for Def leopard like the early you know good Def leopard um it's got like the the verses are are very much uh, similar to Satellite from the first album, and then um, some of the other parts um, remind me a lot of uh, Hit and, another Hit and Run. So it's overall a really interesting mix, and as the album goes on, like it just it's it becomes clearer and clearer that they have like their own sound, and it's really a unique sound, and I appreciate you know there's so many you hear so many bands that just kind of even if they're good they just sound the same and uh, Electric Crown is definitely not one of those. I mean they'll go all the way from you know something just really dark and heavy to something that's more like classic hard rock with some cowbell thrown in. So yeah, total props to these guys, and um, 
yeah, I can't wait to see what they do next. Number nine is a band that's not too far off from that. Um, it's the band Cryptos uh, from India and their latest album, which is called Force of Danger. Um, this is a band that I've had on my radar a little bit for a while. Um, I can't remember which album it was. I think it was their second album I have um, on CD. It was pretty good. But this one is just like a step up from that. And it's just, you know, quality, classic heavy metal, um, a lot of... Uh, I always go back to New Age British Heavy Metal, but it's it's suddenly got that flair in terms of the riffing. Uh, the vocals are a little bit more, a little bit harsher. Um, kind of reminds me of a more refined uh, Steve Souza from Exodus. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a nice compact collection of you know heavy metal songs. Uh, there's a good variety within the songs. Um, nothing you know super fancy or, or complicated, but just really well executed and. Uh, yeah, it's it's got a, a vibe of its own too, which is like, again like like Electric Crown. It's good to hear in this day and age. So another solid album. Number eight, we get our first band from Norway, and it is a band that is one of the very uh, pi- definitely one of the pioneers of the Viking metal movement, uh, Einherjer, and this is their latest one, North Star. Um, this is a band that's had some ups and downs over the years in terms of their quality um, and just their lineup has, has shifted around a bit. But um, their first album, uh, Dragons of the North, is still, to me, like a classic of the Viking metal genre. And I think this might be my favorite album since that one. It's it's just it's eight songs, but, you know, every single one just nails it. Um, if you like that, like, just really kind of folky, but very heavy, you know, gruff vocals, uh, Viking metal. It, this is the album for you. It's just, yeah, it's solid all the way through. Um, really enjoyable. Definitely one of those bands that I'm glad is still on the scene and, uh, doing albums and yeah, I hope this does well for them and they continue on for a while. Number seven is a band from Denmark that has been around since the early 80s and uh, we're one of the pioneers of European thrash metal. Uh, It's the band Artillery and their latest album X or 10. I'm not sure which they intended. Um, This band has gone through a lot of changes in their sound. Like their early first couple albums were pretty, pretty rough and, you know, uh, then they got a much cleaner production for By Inheritance, and that like really kind of took them to a new level. Then you know the '90s hit; they had you know some lineup changes. They kind of went away for a bit, but um, they've had some solid albums uh, since coming back in the 2000s. And uh, this one, to me, is actually probably their best one since By Inheritance. It's just it's really solid. It's got some. Um, Great, great riffs. Like, they just have those awesome, like, kind of razor-sharp thrash metal riffs uh, that my favorite bands from the 80s had. Um, But it's combined with, like, some really melodic, clean vocals, um, which is something you don't always hear in thrash. And uh, when it's done well, you know, you have bands like Anthrax and Flotsam and Jetsam that I just, I love that sound. Like, it's just a great combination to me. And Artillery, um, especially on this album, I just do it, like, really really well um this album got some like bizarre i I considered like really bizarre hate from uh banger tv and when they reviewed it um so i'm not sure what all that's about but um yeah to my ears it's a really quality artillery album that uh you know keeps their legacy going and is one of their best so um if you haven't checked them out yet uh definitely check this out All right, number six. Uh, I haven't talked about any death metal albums so far, and um, if you've watched this channel very much, you know it's not my favorite of uh, heavy metal subgenres. There are certain bands that stick out, like Obituary, um, Cancer, you know, some of the early bands that um, I really got into back in the day uh, that I still enjoy. But this band uh, from Sweden, uh, The Crown, they have done, uh, to me, like the perfect blending of death metal and thrash metal um with you know i think they're definitely more on the death metal side but um it's it's the com it's the perfect balance for me like it it's, it has just enough of the energy and um dynamic feel of thrash metal um combined with the just br- brutal brutality of death metal um and my i, I did another uh, 
I did a review of this album elsewhere on the channel. You can check out. Um, but yeah, I, I got into them back when Death Race King came out, which I still consider their best album. But this, to me, is definitely their second best album. Um, and that's saying something because I really liked um, Cobra Speed Venom uh, from 2018. So yeah, if you like anything like really brutal, intense, uh, really high energy, um, The Crown has definitely got all of that. All right, top five. Um, so I'm going to start this with uh, another band from the early 80s uh, that are still around and are actually had a recent, um, not even a reunion, but a union. They, they took the band that they've had for a while now and just added back in, you know, their old guitarist, an old singer. And uh, of course, I'm talking about Halloween, the band that pretty much laid the foundation for um, power metal in the 90s and on. Um, so yeah, having Kai Hansen, uh, Michael Kiske back in the band, um, definitely, you know, it, it, it brings a whole new dimension to the band sound. I, I've enjoyed the last few Halloween records. Uh, maybe not the last one so much, but there's been several um, in the last 20, 20 or 30 years that um, I think are really solid albums. Um, and Andy Darris as, is, as a vocalist, I didn't really care for him when I first heard him with Halloween, but over the years, like, he's really grown on me. Um, and I haven't seen him live. Like, he just, he's such a character, and he just seems to fit perfectly with the, um, the whole vibe of, uh, of Halloween. But, yeah, having his vocals with Michael's vocals and occasionally Kai's vocals... It's it's just an amazing uh, like palette to draw from, and they they just they really are up to the task on this. Like, it's a long album. Um, there's a lot of songs. It's not one that you might want to you know sit sit and listen to all the way through in one sitting. But um, it's really not a bad song on here. I mean, there's definitely ones that I think are better than others. And lyrically, you know, there's a couple, especially uh, you know like down in the dumps, and you know some of these titles that are just like okay, you know, Robot King. But the quality of the music and uh, the vocals and the, yeah, just the performances all around. I mean, the guitar work on here is amazing. The production is amazing. Uh, I love this album cover. Like, I had to get the you know full on fold out gatefold. It's just amazing to me. Um, and yeah, as a as a comeback album, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's really quite impressive. It's one of the best I've heard in a long time and just, yeah, just a great classic Halloween album. Like everything you love about this band, uh, past and present, it's, it's all here. So yeah, kudos to them for, for actually, you know, living up to their grand reputation on this one. All right. Number four is the band Orden Ogan with their latest album, Final Day. Uh, another one I, Sadly, do not have a physical copy of yet, but we'll have to fix that soon. Um, this is a band that I have only become familiar with in the last few years, uh, and I kind of wish I'd gotten to know them sooner, because, yeah, they're a great band. Um, very uh, kind of modern metal, but like a modern take on classic metal, if that makes any sense. Um, I think a lot of people classify it as power metal, but it doesn't really have a lot of the trappings to me that that quote classified as power metal um it's definitely like fast and melodic uh and the vocals are you know pretty stellar all around and especially the way they they use uh, multi-tracks for the choruses these like just big resounding choruses um when i first listened to this album it seemed a little samey as the last couple of records which i really enjoyed but um i was kind of like well okay that's just another you know, another album of the same thing. But um, the more I've listened to it, like the quality of the individual tracks has really started to to shine for me. And so yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites of theirs. And it's uh, it's also pretty bleak too, which it's like, I don't expect a band, you know, this, you know, grandiose and melodic to be, have such a like dark <laughs> message in the lyrics. But um, yeah, it's very much like the end of days, end of the world, uh, everything kind of closing down, um, but uh, done really well and uh, certainly fitting for our, the time we're living in at the moment. So yeah, kudos to them. 
I gotta stop saying kudos. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so that's number four. All right, top three. Uh, number three is another album that I reviewed elsewhere on the, this channel. Uh, it's a band from Canada called Starlight Ritual. Um, and it is this amazing album right here, Sealed and Starlight. Um, so these guys have a very unique take on, uh, I would say, classic rainbow, uh, filtered through a little bit heavier lens, you know, just with some 80s metal thrown in there. Um, great, unique vocalist. Uh, it's got a good range. Uh, just, it's just one of those bands that you just kind of have to listen to. Um, highly recommend checking out uh, Lunar Rotation, Righteous Ones. Um, one for the road. I mean, I mean, there's not a bad song on here again, but um, yeah, those are the ones that uh, to me like stuck out the most immediately. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a great uh, collection of heavy metal songs. It's like the kind of thing that's just back in the days was kind of standard, but um, it's it's very refreshing these days to to hear a band just come out with this. It's it's so unpretentious too. Like it doesn't feel like they're trying to be a certain thing or tap into a certain sound. It's just like clearly the stuff that uh, is most uh, influential on the band themselves, and it just comes out this way. And it's it's great. I love it. So yeah, another another great band from Canada. So many great bands lately. Number two is a band that's been going for a while now. It's a side project of um, the singer from uh, Soil Work. It's a uh, Night Flight Orchestra. Uh, this is a band that it kind of, on the borderline of, of heavy metal, I guess, it's it's definitely got its heavy moments. It's very guitar heavy, um, but it's it taps a lot more into the 80s um, AOR sound, like the early 80s especially. Uh, they just are so good at you know creating these memorable songs that sound like they they sound timeless, but they also sound like they were you know written and recorded in you know 1983. And I just and I just love the whole like uh, retro golden age of travel you know image that they they have with the the, the band photos and their videos and everything. Um, it's just a really cool, unique. Uh, sound and uh, image and um, the fact that they're able to consistently put out great night flight orchestra albums while at the same time putting out to my mind the best soil work albums uh, of their career is just pretty mind-blowing so I would love to see these guys live I hope they actually tour the US at some point but we'll see and finally number one uh, this is another band that I've been following since the late 90s, I think. Um, and they are from Germany. Uh, and they're another band, Brainstorm, uh, Wall of Skulls. They're another band that um, play what I consider a classic heavy metal, but with a definite modern production and take on it. And they, again, get lumped into power metal a lot, but I really don't think that's a fair term for these guys at all. Um, to me, it's more like an extreme version of like Accept and some of that, you know, and there's, there's a number of bands that came out in the 90s that uh, were not power metal, but they were not, you know, old school metal either, you know, like Tad Morose and uh, Morgana Le Fay, um, bands like that. And to me, Brainstorm is definitely um, right up there with those bands. Um, and they've gone on and just consistently put out, you know, top quality albums. Like there's ones that are better or worse than others, but um, they've never like, like they just seem tireless and they've never like completely disappointed me. So um, that's pretty amazing. And the fact that this, you know, so far into their career is just such a great album. I think one of their best. Um, probably top three at least. Um, just so many great uh, melodies, uh, so many great riffs. The vocals on here, as always, are just stellar. Um, great, great production. Uh, 
it's yeah i don't know what else to say about this band um, i mean if you like them in the past you're gonna love this album uh the artwork on it is particularly great um and if you haven't heard this band yet uh yeah definitely check them out anything that there was they released several videos from this album before it came out so any of those you know um my dystopia turn off the light um I the Deceiver, these, you know, pretty much any song you pick from this is going to be a great song and, and representative of the band sound. So, um, yeah, Brainstorm, my number one album for 2021. So, um, I did want to throw out some honorable mentions because there were just, like I said, so many albums this year. Um, uh, MSG, actually, I love Michael Schenker and uh, the album Immortal actually is one of his best in a long time. Like it's got a lot of different vocalists on it, but it still holds together. It's got some of that classic rainbow. Well, he works with three of the vocals from rainbow. So I guess that's not surprising, but um, yeah, that one surprised me. Uh, Burning Witches, um, another solid album from them. Uh, the band Axe Witch, uh, who have, you know, were around back in the early eighties. They returned with a, a pretty solid album. Like again, pretty classic heavy metal, um, fairly updated production. Uh, Mordred, another band who has been off the scene for a while. Uh, one of those bands from the Bay Area that were, you know, aligned with the uh, Bay Area thrash scene and played a lot of shows with those bands. But um, they also incorporated a lot of uh, elements outside of that. Um, they had a DJ as one of the core members of the band. So you had a lot of that scratching and, um, you know, they played a lot of like slap bass um, back when that was a thing. <laughs> it's very much a trend, but they were one of the ones that did it before it became a trend. So cool to see them back. Um, Lucifer, uh, you know, the band Lucifer is their fourth albums out now. Um, that would have made my list, except it just, I mean, I like it, but it, their first three albums, I, I feel like were so good that, um, yeah, this one was a little disappointing for me. It was, it was not bad though. Um, Beast in Black, um, the band Galaxy, that's one that um, I, the more I listen to it, the more I like it. So yeah, that's one that, you know, a month from now might be in my top 20, but um, great, uh, just traditional heavy metal band from Australia, I think, but um, could be wrong on that. Uh, band Made, uh, the band from Japan, uh, kind of slightly on the edge of, of heavy metal, like some of their stuff is a little bit more like... I don't even know what you call it. I mean, it's it's hard. It's definitely hard rock, but um, man, the stuff that's metal is very metal. The playing in that band is just off the charts. Like especially their bass player just boggles my mind every time I listen to them. Um, they'll have like a solo breakout in one part, and then even when if you're just listening to the song itself, like during the verses or choruses, and actually focus on what the bass player is playing, it's like holy crap. Um, <laughs> Abysmal grief. Uh, some real doomy, uh, dark, gloomy metal from um, Italy. Good stuff. Um, and Todd Michael Hall, uh, the, singer, the current singer of Riot, um, he did a solo album this year. Which, uh, more in the hard rock, kind of classic hard rock, um, classic rock vein. But really good. And he's got a great voice, and it's just it's cool to see him uh, still out there doing stuff um, while, you know, Riot's... Uh, working on Riot 5, I should say, is working on whatever they're doing next. Um, I, I wanted to mention some non-metal albums, too, that came out this year that I really enjoyed. Monster Magnets, um, they did a covers album, but it was like a lot of the garage and psychedelic bands that influenced them. And it's really well done. Like, it, you can really hear, like, uh, more of the early Monster Magnet in these songs. You can see where that influence came from. And... Uh, yeah, just really well executed. I'm not usually big on covers albums like that one Saxon did this year was was pretty um, disappointing all around. But um, yeah, check out Monster Magnets. Uh, Lilith Czar, uh, she's a singer who's gone through several different bands and identities, I think. But um, yeah, it's kind of a weird mix of like kind of industrial pop with some uh, metal guitars here and there, but pretty cool stuff. Uh, Nick Waterhouse, uh, who I just saw live, like one of the few shows I was able to see this year. Man, he does like a great like 60s R&B uh, 
you know, kind of that like really loungy sort of, I don't even know what, how, what to describe. And just check out some of the songs. Uh, really good stuff. Really great band. Um, totally unique too. <laughs> um, John Carpenter. I mean, I love John Carpenter soundtracks. He did another Lost Themes album this year. As good as ever. Um, Poppy, uh, the, you know, the YouTube sensation that went viral for a long time, started doing music, uh, started out doing synth pop, like kind of weird, silly things, and then slowly evolved into doing like kind of, kind of new metal. And now with the latest one, it's, it's kind of a mix of industrial metal, um, nineties, alternative grunge. It's, she's just all over the place, but like, I've always thought, uh, she had like a really good artistic vision, that, um, has carried through like all the different styles that she's done. Um, and this is like, uh, one of, one of her best albums yet. And the offspring, um, another band from the nineties that I just, uh, I kind of given up on because when they started working with Bob rock, like I really just didn't like what he brought to the band. And I didn't feel like the songs themselves were very memorable or very good. Um, but this album, after a long break, I don't even know when their last album was, but, um, and this one's pretty short, but it's just, it's like, to me, all the classic things I liked about The Offspring. Um, a couple songs that are silly and whatever, but um, yeah, it's just got that like classic pop punk sound that they were known for, um, you know, more of an edge than bands like Green Day or anybody else like that. And uh, it's just cool to have them back. And like, I feel like they're like, back on top of their game, even though they're still working with Bob Rock. I'll, I will forgive them. Um, and then I wanted to mention, uh, there were several EPs that came out this year. Um, it seems like that's kind of the thing people have been doing, especially I think during the pandemic, um, when they've had time to, they didn't want to put out a whole new album, but they've had time to, you know, do some new, re new recording. And, uh, so they've released EPs, um, soil work going back to them, uh, wisp of the Atlantic came out this year and it's, uh, it's considered an EP, even though it's like, to me, album length, it's almost 40 minutes. I think it's like 30 something minutes. Um, and it is great. Like it, 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 to me, it would probably be my number one album of the year if it was, a, if it was considered an album. Um, it's definitely continuing on from where they were at on the last album. Uh, and just another like, you know, five or I can't remember how many songs are. I think it's five songs, but one of them is like, you know, this big, long monstrous track. So, um, yeah, just more great work from Soil Work. Uh, let's see who else had... Oh, Bloodsport, a new band. Um, I forget where they're from, but um, that one's really... I think it might, it might be Finland. Could be wrong. Um, but yeah, uh, great EP from them. Um, can't wait for them to do a full album. Uh, Primal Fear had a cool EP. Um, Sirith Ungle came back with that EP of like uh, old tracks that they've re-recorded. Very cool. Uh, Black Mask from Mexico, really cool underground uh, heavy metal band. Freeways, another Canadian band that um, has uh, gotten a lot of love. Um, a little bit more of the hard rock direction, you know, Thin Lizzy, that kind of thing. Um, but still top quality. Uh, Mayhem, a band that I I really liked, you know, their, their classic, classic stuff. And once they got a little bit more technical and like well-produced, um, I kind of lost interest in that kind of same way, same, same thing that happened to Emperor for me. Um, but this is cool. It's an EP of, um, you know, half new songs and half, um, covers of like classic hardcore, uh, bands that influence them. And it's just a really interesting collection of songs. And I, I like the new songs quite a bit. Like I'm curious to see where they go with their next full length album. So the, the other thing I want to note on that is that Hellhammer's drumming actually sounds like actual drumming this time. And it's for so long, it just is felt so like that triggered sound that I just gets on my nerves. Um, so that, that was a very welcome, uh, thing to hear. Um, Spirit Adrift, uh, another cool band that's been doing, you know, not necessarily strictly traditional heavy metal, but, you know, in, definitely influenced by that. Um, they had an EP and then, uh, the band Insomnium, who is one of those bands that I've always 
thought was good. And I've seen them live a couple times and they're great live. Um, but I've just never really been able to get into their songs. Like they just don't really stick with me. Um, and with this EP, like it feels like they're definitely starting to experiment a little more. And, um, yeah, it's a little more variety. There's some clean vocals and, uh, yeah, the songs just seem more developed and interesting. So another one, I'm really curious to see where they go with their next album. But anyways, that's it for me. That's 2021. Um, some more great albums this year, despite it being a terrible year overall, generally for everybody um, <laughs> outside of that. Um, I'm hoping to have uh, some more updates soon. I know I've been kind of slow lately. Uh, work's just been kind of dragging me down. But um, yeah, uh, I'm, I want to get some more... Um, interviews up. Uh, I've got some books I actually want to talk about um, in the near future. And yeah, I'll try to get some more album reviews up soon. But anyways, uh, I hope you guys like this. Um, let me know if you agree or disagree with any of these choices. I'm sure, I mean, everyone's got their own opinions and tastes, so I'm sure everyone, no one's got the same exact list. But um, yeah, I'm curious to see what uh, other people, you know, like this year especially within, you know, kind of this realm of, of stuff like the traditional heavy metal scene. Um, but yeah, if you could just leave some comments, uh, subscribe, and um, I will see you folks in the new year. So just hoping 2022 sees a little more regularity and uh, hopefully a return of more concerts because I have really been missing that. So anyways, until then, take care, stay metal.